So before I talk about the endocrine system in more detail, it probably makes sense that I'm going to talk to you about control systems. So the nervous and endocrine system. And I want to compare them a bit so that we can really know what the endocrine system does and why we have these two different control systems. So I'd like to start by reviewing a stimulus response pathway. Um, this is a formal learning check, but you should be writing diagrams down as, as I do things, right? So a stimulus response pathway, a simple one. And I'm saying this because you'll see more complex ones, um, mostly in the spring, but of course it gets more complicated. So we have mostly seen examples. I think most of the examples I've drawn are neural. So the nervous system, um, a stimulus response pathway in the nervous system. So knee jerk reflex is initiated by the, the spinal cord is the integrating center for that. That is an, a nervous system um, response. That's not endocrine system. And that's preview, that's because it's, it's quick. So the generic pathways though are gonna be pretty similar. So there should be no surprise here what I'm about to draw. You should be like, oh my gosh, I'm already sick of her drawing this. These components, response. So that could be a tap on the patellar tendon, tendon causing a kick of the leg. Now, this is a stimulus response pathway. This is not a feedback loop. Talk about that in a moment. Endocrine. If we were going to have a stimulus response pathway, we also could. So the endocrine system um, can act as a integrator as well. However, the main difference is the receptor is often the same thing as the integrator. So the thing that detects integrator, the thing that detects um, whatever, is, whatever variable we're talking about is also the thing that makes a decision. So we'll see some examples of this. Pancreas is a good one. So the pancreas is able to detect blood sugar levels and then produce a hormone to respond to that either insulin or glucagon, depending on which direction blood sugar is, if it's too high or too low. So this, and actually I'll add to this in just a moment, I'm gonna label this endocrine organ, but let me finish this first. The rest is gonna be the same, right? We still have to have an effect. For blood sugar, one of the effectors or targets is skeletal muscle. Um, when blood sugar is too high, it, the skeletal muscle is going to um, be using ATP more to and have like glucose be produced into ATP to lower glucose levels. We'll come back to that example, but liver and skeletal muscle are example of targets or effectors of the pancreas. The pancreas is still really important in that process, right? So for our neural feedback loop, nervous system, Let's say here, okay, I'm just gonna put central nervous system, right? This integrator is always in the central nervous system. The input signal from the receptor is pretty much always gonna be a sensory neuron. And this output signal is always gonna be, pretty much always gonna be a motor neuron. And we'll come back to those the nervous system in more detail, and actually the knee jerk reflex in more detail in a little, not actually for a while, because now the point's endocrine. So endocrine, this here would be the endocrine organ. Um, the input signal actually might be direct. So endocrine, endocrine organs can just directly detect variables that are out of whack. So blood sugar, so we'll see examples of that. Um, the output signal is gonna be, what do you think? A hormone, right? That's what endocrine organs produce. And that hormone is going to target 
often more than one thing in the body to respond to that um, thing. Okay, so these are both stimulus response pathways. Um, the knee-jerk reflex is not an example of a feedback loop. Glucose regulation is. What makes this a feedback loop is, so is it a regulated variable? And then if so, we have that, this case here, let's use blood sugar as our example. That's what we've been using. Blood sugar is a regulated variable. So this response is going to feed back to turn off the system. Once our body has responded to the high or low blood sugar, the effect of this pathway has dealt with that to maintain homeostasis. There are nervous system feedback loops as well, but um, I just wanna use this also to emphasize what makes it a feedback loop isn't necessarily these labels here, but the, the fact that it's a homeostatically maintained variable. So in the endocrine system, in the rest of this week, we will see pancreas and parathyroid as examples. And they're both going to be endocrine organs that have negative feedback components to control blood calcium and blood glucose are the two examples with those two organs. There are endocrine functions in the body that are not necessarily involved in feedback loops. So processes related to growth and development. So again, emphasizing that. Um, okay, so their overview of the two control systems and review of feedback loops and stimulus response, those, those components. Let's do a learning check and then we're gonna go on to compare and contrast these two a little bit more. So I'm not gonna respond to this one here, but it's going to be hidden somewhere else coming up here. So I've got a table I'm gonna fill out and you should be filling out with me. This is, again is not, you don't have to turn this in as learning check, you can if you want to, um, but when I go over it, it um, these aren't all things you should know already. Some of them are. Chemical message for the nervous system. So for the synaptic signaling, right? Is what this is. Oh, I think I actually have that down there. Okay, that'll, that'll come up in a moment. Type of communication is going to be synaptic. This is going to be the bloodstream or hormonal. Um, the chemical message is a hormone. Here it is a neurotransmitter. There are electrical synapses. Won't talk about them much. Here we're assuming we're talking about um, neurotransmitters. Okay, distribution. So the nervous system, it's going to be directed to one specific thing, so targeted. I'll show a picture in a moment. Because it's, talk, we're talking about synapses. The distribution of endocrine system is widespread because the hormones traveling throughout the body in the bloodstream. So it has potential effects everywhere in the body. It has effects in more than one place in the body, widespread effects. How widespread depends on the hormone and where there's receptors for it. Speed, fast. So we will talk about action potentials um, in several weeks. They're fast, they're like electricity. Hormones travel through the bloodstream. That takes longer. So effects are slower. There's some other reasons as well, but that's, that's the main reason. How to increase signal intensity. So if you want to have a larger muscle contraction or a larger um, amount of insulin produced in response to blood sugar, two different things. How do you do that? For this one, we're going to increase neuron firing. So the action potentials that are fired. 
we'll, we'll see that when we get back to nervous system. Here, we wanna increase the amount of hormone. So it's our two different mechanisms um, used to increase signal intensity. That one's probably a little bit less important at this point. Okay, I want to draw one picture for you here with this idea of targeted, targeted versus widespread distribution. Should be pretty clear what I'm drawing here. And I'm gonna draw a neuron in the brain. We're gonna, it's like an eyeball. We're gonna do neuron anatomy um, right at some point. Um, but let's just pretend this neuron comes down and like goes here. That is a random spot it's going to. This is not your neural anatomy lecture. That neuron is, let's say, synapsing or talking to, let's say this one is a muscle. It's actually talking not to even a whole muscle, but a group of muscle cells. So this is very targeted. A different neuron is going to have a different target. And in reality, they do have, they, they can branch and there's complicated um, signaling pathways with neurons, but targeted, right? Even if it's more than one target. Endocrine signaling. Let's say we've got a endocrine gland here. Looks just like one, right? Label our neurons. The endocrine gland is going to release hormone into the bloodstream. Well, where did my bloodstream go? How is this for clear? There's a heart that's pumping that. This hormone is going to travel in the entire body, right? Widespread effects. So that is clear, right? In both cases, both hormones and neurotransmitters interact with specific receptors on the target cells. It's just the pathway to get there whether it's how targeted it is. Okay, a little bit more of intro to endocrine and then we'll go into um, some endocrine systems. So endocrine, what makes them endocrine organs, right, is they're producing hormones into the bloodstream. They, meaning endocrine organs, are endocrine glands. So endocrine gland is over here. This is what we're focused on right now. This is the endocrine gland that has a bunch of cells together producing hormone. It's gonna travel into the bloodstream. Exocrine glands, just to contrast to that, also produce things that they secrete. Exocrine means outside of. Endo means inside. So exocrine glands produce secretions into, onto the outside of the body. So this clear example here, this kind of looks like, well, a sweat gland. Sweat is an example, but also salivary. Um, there's ones in the pancreas that secrete into the digestive system. Because remember, the digestive system is actually outside of the body. So we'll see some exocrine glands. Um, and it's actually a developmental process of how these glands are set up to either go out versus not have access to the epithelial tissue. So we'll see these briefly again when we do um, tissue types and or integumentary systems. We'll especially see exocrine glands then. So endocrine secretes into bloodstream, into inside the body, that's hormones. So what are these endocrine glands? Endocrine glands, these are also hormone producing 
glands or organs, right? These are organs. So this, I'm gonna label all of these and then I'll tell you which ones we're gonna focus on this semester. Um, this back here is actually the pineal gland. We're, we'll not be focused on that, but it produces melatonin to help you with your sleep cycles. Here is the hypothalamus. We've seen that a bit with um, homeostatic regulation. We will see it much more in the spring. It is physically and functionally attached to the pituitary gland. These three I'll talk a whole lot more about, well, especially these two in the spring. This is the thyroid. It has the parathyroid glands, little guys or girls on top of it. There are four parathyroid glands that make up the organ. This is the thymus, also involved in lymphatic immunity stuff. Adrenal glands are right on top of the, those kidneys. Pancreas, you will see this in the rat, looks a little, a little different in the rat. And then we've got our gonads here. So the testes, I'm sorry, that is not the testes. That is the ovaries over there and the testes. These together in a more generic term are called the gonads. So I'm gonna star for you which ones we'll focus on this semester. Um, thyroid maybe a bit, but, but not much. Um, so I'm gonna do that. Parathyroid, yes. Adrenal glands, I'm gonna do this little one. I seem a bit pancreas, yes. That's it. This week I'll do these two as um, kind of case studies of endocrine system. One more thing. There are also a wide variety of endocrine organs and, and glands outside of these technical endocrine organs. So almost every organ in the body produces at least one hormone. So hormone production may not be its primary job, it's probably not its primary job, but it does it. So a little bit of like the labeling of organs in organ systems, what you did for that activity last week is a little bit silly, right? Because knowing their functions is probably, probably more important, but um, know that almost every organ produces hormones. That's one of its functions. Kidneys are a big one. So kidneys produce various hormones involved in red blood cell production, water regulation, et cetera, somewhat related to it, its function. The thymus, the heart produces hormones, um, stomach and other digestive um, system, fat cells, skeletal muscle, uh, the skin, um, uterus, bones, blood vessels, all produce hormone, hormones. So when we get to some of these um, organs, I want to be able to talk about hormones. That's one reason I talked about hormones earlier in the semester is so that you have an idea of what these things are if they come up in the skeletal muscle, for example. Um, and they will come up with skeletal system with regulation of blood calcium levels, which is um, regulated by endocrine system, but part of the skeletal system function is to store calcium and then um, release it when, when needed, when told to. All right, so that's introdu introduction to the endocrine system. Um, comparing it to the nervous system, next I will talk more in detail back to, to endocrine types of hormones, and then we'll go into pancreas and parathyroid as, as kind of case studies of endocrine function this week.